Time for news. What's going on? My name is Mike B. This is my co-host today, Sunday. Sunday, how are you doing? Please say hello. <clears throat> say hello, Sunday. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to be doing news. That's what we do on Just News. Also, we have these co-hosts over here. All my beautiful, beautiful co-hosts here. Looking quite lovely today. All of them. Thank you so much for joining us. We have quite the panel. Quite the panel here. To go through some of this. I'm not paid yet. <laughs> you'll be, you'll, you'll, you'll get there. You'll get there. It's a, uh, it's a net, it's a net 360 is what it is. So yeah, check out me in a year. Um, so we have had a very eventful <laughs> Sunday. Uh, I just, 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 just wake up, wake up. Come on. We got to do the show. We've had a very eventful week. Well, at least one company has had a very eventful week, two weeks, three weeks. By three weeks, four weeks, pretty much its launch, like four weeks. Uh, it has uh, it has been quite a uh, uh, turbulent time for Bethesda. Uh, for yeah, for some weeks, for some weeks, is what we'll say. Um, it was not CD Projekt Red. I feel I, I think like CD Projekt Red is the last one, the last one in the in, in the group here. Um, that has not yet, not quite pissed everybody off, uh, everybody off. Not quite, not quite, not quite. They'll get there though. Give, just give them time. Give them time. There's nobody left. Who's left? Who's left? Blizzard, gone. EA, oh, come on. Like, come on. Seriously. They're, they're slowly actually getting on our good side somehow, right? It's kind of like when everybody like hated Trump and then George W. Bush like started coming out. It was like, oh, everyone's like, oh, George W. Bush is pretty awesome. It's like, well, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those things like everybody's trying to capitalize on uh, uh on 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 these other companies basically falling out of grace uh with us um yeah well, obviously blizzard has their issues uh uh nintendo nintendo is doing pretty good they have a recent announcement we don't have to cover on the show today but they'd have make make a recent announcement that they're not going to be uh using the creators program anymore as a means to monetize videos on youtube so if you do make content featuring nintendo uh products uh or games on YouTube, you are allowed to monetize it. Unless, unless they decide that the video should not be monetized for whatever reason. If you read it, that's basically what it says. Uh, so that is a good thing. It just took them forever to do it. It took, it took them forever to do it, but I'm, I mean, it's fine. It's, we got there. We finally got there. It's kind of like No Man's Sky. It's like kind of dumb at the beginning, eventually won us over. Uh, Bethesda, Bethesda has got themselves in a very, very, very deep hole. It all started with, oh, <clears throat> all right. It all started uh, after launch. There was some negative feedback, right? We know there's lots of negative feedback. Uh, I myself am actually on the side where I enjoy the game. I do. It is, it is, it is not a good game. Uh, it has issues. I couldn't recommend it to anybody necessarily without, without having all these caveats. It's like, well... If you like blank and blank and blank, and you're okay with this and that and that, Anna, then you know what? Maybe, uh, maybe it might work for you. It's really hard to pitch the game. It's super hard to pitch the game. Everybody on YouTube and everywhere else hates it. Absolutely hate the worst, worst game ever. Worst game ever. Uh, and so that was pretty much the reviews coming out uh, after the game was initially release. So, so Fallout 76 was a cash grab on the Fortnite PUBG market. Uh, Fallout 76, it does kind of get as that feel. The timing, the timing does kind of point in that direction. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, they found they found a hole like no other and st it, stick, it stuck to it. Yes, they did. <sighs> so the first thing, the first like big thing, I guess that happened, the first actual like action that we got from Bethesda uh, in response to all of this negative feedback was, well, let's Put Fallout 76 on sale. That should actually help appease the fans. Maybe they'll be happy to see that the game is on sale. They can get it for cheaper. There we go. Because we all know that there's a lot of feedback coming from people who don't even own the game. So now they can own the game and then for cheaper and then complain about the game officially in an official capacity, which is kind of great. So Fallout 76 going on sale was not initially you would think, oh, this is because, oh, yeah, it's, it's the holidays and all that stuff. Yeah, I said the same thing. It's like, oh, it's the holidays. It was, it was, it was for sale on the holidays, whatever. Which you could, you could say, yeah, it's probably true. But usually when things go on sale that close to release, it's like $10 off, right? Like $10 off, something like that. Uh, it's not upwards of 42% off. 
even their actual store that's the thing that that's the if, if the official store didn't have a sale then i would say you know what it's it's probably some kind of deal that they made with the uh with the distributors uh where they uh the actual other platforms uh, uh storefronts and all that could mark down the price um <clears throat> but the official store also had it on sale so so that that's kind of a big red flag it's like that's kind of weird and also sucks for people who bought the game you know, within a couple of weeks of the game launching, and then the next week is now all of a sudden on sale. And again, yeah, like I said, yeah, the the official store doing it, that's the red flag. If it was just if it was just Amazon and GameStop and all these other guys doing it, then it's like, yeah, you know, it's it's gonna be on sale for Black Friday. But the official store does it, yeah, it's an issue. So <clears throat> that is um that's where things kind of started. I don't really know what order these things go in. Honestly, because it's kind of been just a blur, a, just a blur of just missteps, courtesy of Bethesda. Sunday, excuse me, you have to face the camera. Thank you. There we go. Thank you so much. Um, how big of a hole can we dig ourselves into? I feel like right now is the best time for them to do everything wrong. That way it can all be bundled up nice and neat in this nice little like shitty package. And then they could say, yeah, we had a rough fourth quarter. <laughs> We had a rough fourth quarter, uh, but I think they're kind of beyond that point now. So uh, they did actually, there was a, there was an Elder Scrolls, like what's that mobile game? There's, there's some kind of something they're working on. They said they're going to push back uh, to next year or something. Um, Blades? Wait, what is it? What was the, uh, I can't remember the name of the, th I just happened to catch the headline that they were pushing it back. And my first reaction was like, of course they are, because they know they're going to get neg negative feedback for it. They could, anything they do right now, Blades. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jason Winter, my, my co-host. Um, Anything they do right now is going to have a negative uh, connotation att attached to it. They, so right now they need to focus on trying to make things right um, because they've not been making things right. Uh, starting with, uh, let's start with the Power Armor Edition. Josh got this. Josh Lore, he got this. Uh, I wonder what it hit. I'm sure he probably has the same bag that, uh, you know, whatever. But I've never seen a picture of him wearing the actual armor. Um, so... This was a Reddit post, copied over to Imager here. The bag, now yeah, that bag, doesn't that bag look great? Look at this bag, that's a sexy bag. Uh, but the actual bag looks like this. It is a, uh, what is that, nylon? <clears throat> right, cheap nylon. It's a nylon bag. This is not the same as canvas. If you're not familiar with materials, canvas and nylon are not close at all. Except that you can make things out of them. That's where, that's where the similarities kind of like, that's where they join right there. You can make stuff with canvas and you can make stuff with nylon. That's kind of, but at, at beyond that, they're very different materials. So, his, his profile is him wearing the helmet. Yeah, there you go. It's a grocery bag. This is very, this is very similar to the, uh, uh, the pull string bags. Actually, looking at the material here, it actually looks like it's cheaper than the free pull string bags you get from uh from conventions you like i got that switch one everyone gets them right there's little 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 bags uh and those are usually pretty cheap and this looks even cheaper again yeah exactly sorrels because you can actually see the light coming through on the inside here and that that to me reads like that is some thin thin material so they didn't just go for nylon they went for like the cheapest the cheapest nylon they possibly could have 10 cent bag at safeway has more quality to it um the bag is a metaphor for the game engine yeah yeah it's pretty it's pretty damning <clears throat> so they uh they sent out a request uh, the response i got uh so in the many months leading to the packaging and shipping da, da, da. so it basically says here it says thank you for contacting bethesda customer support my name is nicholas i'd be happy to help you today due to the unavailability of materials canvas by the way isn't isn't the 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 shroud of turin made out of canvas I'm gonna go ahead and say that's pretty old, right? I could be wrong about the material, but let's just say that canvas is pretty old. Uh, probably pretty widely available. But unfortunately though, in 2018, <laughs> the, the, the year of our Lord Jesus, uh, we, uh, we've run out of these materials. They're unavailable. Uh, we had to switch to a nylon carrying case in the fall of 96 Power Armor Edition. We hope this doesn't prevent anyone from enjoying what we feel is one of our best collector's editions. The best. Now, this isn't the first time, this is not the first time that 
we've had a let me see if i can find this here um oh god do i have this link i better have this link uh this is the first time that they've done this i have a picture here somewhere it is i oh, here it is collector's edition nope there it is i found an ebay listing with the skyrim yeah it looks like your cookies whatever with the Skyrim Elder Scrolls V parchment canvas style. They pitched this as a canvas map. And people that got it were surprised to find that it was indeed not a canvas map. And it was made out of some kind of plastic nylon material. Uh, I don't know if I can necessarily get, I mean, I guess I can kind of get closer here so you guys get a better look. But you can actually see it in the shine over here. Uh, let me see. There's actually a shine to it. Canvas doesn't shine like that. Canvas style! Canvas style, though! That has a bit of a shine to it. <laughs> like, my, my canvas style, like, every, anything could be canvas style, I guess, if you just pitch it that way. Uh, super shiny canvas. So I found this, and it's just, because I heard, I, I read, I think in the same article, actually, in the same uh, thread, um, that that was a thing. And actually, it's funny because they link, it says, on a semi-related note, someone just sent me this, and apparently they did the same shit with the canvas map in Skyrim. You know, the uh, the hate newspapers meme, hate canvas is more fitting. So, uh, what I think is interesting about this, <clears throat> not just the fact that, you know, they're just up to their old tricks again, but look at the date. 2011. So these guys are talking about, it says, who got the canvas map with a copy of Elder Scrolls? Was this the first run thing? First 10,000. It's very nice. I'm going to want me frame it. It says, those pre-order bonus. Uh, da, 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 da. That is not real canvas. It's just thick paper made to look like canvas by having been pressed that way. And it stinks. And it stinks. So this is 11, 11, 11. Yeah, okay. There you go. Yeah, you're right. Um, so this is seven years ago. This shows, I, I think this is a great example of how social media has, and Reddit, has, has, uh, uh, has amplifies these things. Because this was a problem, but it was isolated to Nexus Mods forums. Uh, it, this, I mean, this thing only got like a handful of views or a handful of things. I found a couple Reddit threads from back in the day from around that same period where people were like talking about it. It had like, you know, three, three or four responses. And people were like, wow, this is, uh, this is... This sucks, but it wasn't, it wasn't the same as, uh, as, as it is now. And he says, is it more amplified because of the poor research of the game? Yes, that's part of it for sure. That's part of it for sure. But it is true that, I mean, especially if I'm reading a comment on a forum, which nobody uses anymore, uh, that the spread of spreading of information is much more, uh, 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 rapid nowadays than it used to be. And I don't remember hearing about this as an issue. I mean, granted, people love you know Skyrim. It had the same issues as, and, and all that seven years ago. Uh, Collector edition culture wasn't the same back then either. Oh yeah, I, I agree with that. What else came with this thing? It didn't come with a giant helmet. <clears throat> uh, the problem is that they're saying the cost of materials was the reason for not doing the canvas map. Uh, well, they said the cost also said the availability. But there's also another response here. If you guys haven't seen it, this one, this one is the one that I didn't believe. I didn't believe this. Technically, read as the former. Get out of here, which is the logic. We are sorry that you aren't happy with the bag. The bag shown in the in the media was a prototype and was too expensive to make. We aren't planning on doing anything about it. We aren't planning on doing anything about it. Man. That that line right there was I I saw this and I was like that is fake. That is bullshit. No, no way, no way a major publisher or any, any customer service representative would actually say that. And so then Bethesda, they responded in the thread. And I'll read it to you guys. It says, thanks for tagging us in this post. We're not sure. Uh, if you've seen this, making the rounds on various areas of the internet yet, but we've made an official statement about this issue and included it below. The Bethesda Store's support member is uh, is a temporary contract employee and not directly employed by Bethesda or Bethesda Game Studios. We apologize 
to the customer who took the time to reach out. The support response was incorrect and not in accordance with our conduct policy. Unfortunately, due to the unavailability of materials, we had to switch to nylon carrying case and the Fallout 76 Power Armor Edition. We hope this doesn't prevent anyone from enjoying what we feel is one of our best clutches. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Yeah, oh, he's totally fired. Totally fired. It reads like English isn't his first language. Yeah, yeah. Well, then why hire people that can't communicate? Right? I don't care if someone's bilingual. But if your job is to communicate to people in a certain language, you need to be fluent. <laughs> you, need, you need to be fluent in that language. Uh, it's just, it's cheap labor. Yeah, it's totally. It's cheap labor. 100%. 100%. Call, call, call Comcast. Right now. Just call them. Just call them. Just, just ask to speak to your representative. Nine times out of ten, especially if it's after hours, you're going to talk to somebody. Uh, true story. I talked to a gentleman the other night when my internet dropped out. Uh, and he had the most like cowboy accent. It was a really strange force, uh, cowboy accent. And then as we were talking, cause I was real, I was really upset about Comcast being dumb. Um, he, his, he had an Indian accent that started to come out and I was just like, Did this guy just try to like fool me with this, like fucking like Clint Eastwood accent. Like it really was a, like Clint Eastwood was like, well, thank you for calling Comcast. How am I help you, sir? Or something like that. I got. I can't do it. But uh, yeah, just just hello, yeah, fellow American. Like Jesus, come on, man, can't fool me. Uh, <laughs> so needless to say, but that's especially this post here, negative twenty two thousand three hundred and thirty nine uh, down votes. That's pre that's pretty significant. That's pretty significant. So what are they gonna do about it? What are they gonna do about it? What can they do? What can they do? Well, how do they fix this stuff? Now, don't, don't blur out, if you know the answer, don't blur it out. What should Fallout or uh, Bethesda do to correct this issue? What should they do? What would you expect? You spent $200 on this collector's edition pack. What should they do? Say you're freaking sorry. Well, I'm glad that you're so easily appeased. That would be a start. That would be a start. Shut down the servers and <laughs> the entire, wait, what? And refund all players their money, close their entire company and die. Wow. Uh, buy some freaking bags and just eat the cost. There you go. That's a good one. Make the game great. That would be something that would be pretty nice if they could, if they could ever do that. Uh, maybe just hire the modders that have been fixing their games for years. Uh, hire EA's PR firm. Give people 500 Adam. That's terrible. 500 Adam points? Nobody, what? That's like $5 of Monopoly money. There's no way that's going to be, that's, there's no value there. They would never do that. That's silly. That's silly. That's, why wouldn't they, why would they go and do that exact thing? Why would they go and do that exact thing to all these poor people who spent $200 on this pack? We understand and respect that there is disappointment with the bag and the Power Armor Edition. We are sorry. Please contact with as a support to provide proof of your collector's edition purchase. They will assist in granting your account 500 atoms. 500 atoms, as uh, someone on Reddit pointed out, will buy you a door and some flowers in their cosmetic shop. A door and flowers. I don't know what color the door is. I can't. I couldn't tell you honestly. I'm, I, hope, I think it's a good door. A good. It's a pretty good door. I think it's pretty solid. It'll open and close. Has door handle. Some texture. Uh, it's shit brown. Oh, well, fuck. <laughs> it's shit brown. If you're pissed off the community, you can apologize with donkeys. No, that, that's, I mean, this is, actually, yeah, I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> if Bethesda could do it, why can't I? Uh, this is such a huge slap in the face because, I mean, for obvious, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here, but let's just go ahead and roll with it. <laughs> 500 atoms, 500 virtual currency is so... A, a embarrassingly low for someone that spent $200 on this thing. They should have literally given them $200 with the freaking atoms, like $200 of the virtual currency. You don't have that many actual collector's edition sales that you're going to miss out on the virtual items that don't actually cost you or have any, any actual overhead. Like just, just give them, just, just give it. It would, if they came out and said, you know what? 200 atoms. And if you don't like that and you want a refund, contact us. I feel like people would probably, 200 atoms, 200 dollars with atoms, 200 atoms, Jesus. Um, it's nothing. It's nothing. I don't know how many atoms I have. I, I didn't even know I collected atoms. I guess I'm getting atoms while I'm playing. Um, but apparently, 
you know, I, I probably have more than 500 atoms, not even noticing that I had them. That's, that's how, that's how little 500 is. It's nothing. It's a $5 bag. Uh, yeah, that's just, yeah, it's the cost of the bag. It's less than the $5. That, that damn bag probably cost them $200, $2 to make mass produce. Probably. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I don't think it's any lower than that. I think, I think $2 probably makes sense. Um, right? Yeah. Could it be lower than that? No. God, it might be. No, no. $2. I think about $2. Um, it co- yeah, it cost them nothing. It cost them nothing. And here's the thing. You're pissing off not just like the general player base, you're pissing off the people that gave you the most money, the most possible money. You pissed them off. Let me, let me, I, I, th- that is, that is dumb. As a streamer, let me tell you, pissing off, like being an asshole to people who are some of my biggest supporters would be suicide. That would just be stupid. Why would you do that? Right? Unless they deserve it. No, they deserve it. That's different. Then it's like, you know, you, the number one rule, don't be a dick, right? Uh, but that's crazy. I bet 500 is the full price purchase of anything in the game. You always have something left over, and that is the psychological method of encouraging for the currency purchases. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's 500, 500 atoms is, is just nothing. Um, I live in Wales, and I'm pissed. <laughs> they need to cater to the whales. Um, yeah, just, just, just absurd. So... That's the response. Uh, that's, I guess that's pretty much how they're gonna, they're gonna, this is the first time that people have been screwed over by, uh, by collector's edition, right? Um, those of you guys might remember, this is, uh, this is kind of an oldie but goodie. Marvel vs. Capcom, the infinity, the infinite, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite's collector's edition is disappointing because it is quite literally just like Easter eggs. Like the little plastic ones you can like pop open. I said quite literally, not quite, but quite literally, pretty close. Uh, let me show you the actual, the actual expectation here. This tweet pretty much sums it up. Your expectation versus the reality. Left hand side, you can see what it was was pitched, and on the right, you can see what you actually got. Yeah, oof, oof indeed. Capital oof. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. So. This isn't like a new thing. I and mean, we already pointed out that Skyrim's what was it? Uh uh canvas like <laughs> the canvas like material uh, also had its own share of uh uh of uh inaccuracies to the uh to the actual advertisement. Um this is an issue that's been going on. Yeah, it's an issue that's been going on for a long time. I I don't know. I I can't tell you why well, here's what I can say. Collectors editions I don't get a lot of them. Pretty much the majority of the collector's edition I have is like WoW expansions. And those have all been pretty accurate with what I'm pitched because they don't really include anything physical. I think like a keychain in one or a CD in another. And you can't really fuck that up. Like really, the value, I don't know how Blizzard did this, the value in their collector's editions is actually the box themselves. Like the box is the actual value. And if the box comes looking good, you know, nice and thick material, heavy. I'm good, right? But this, this is a mess. This is a fucking mess. Just an absolute mess. So what do players do? <clears throat> they try to get refunds. They try to get refunds, right? You try to get refunds. Because you were, this is bait and switch. It was bait and switch. So I found this, uh, uh, this uh, Reddit post. It was removed. So I'd actually go dig it up on remove, remove edits. Stupid name. Um, and it says here that Megloxio and Rathod, I really slaughtered that, uh, basically lawyer practice. They're currently investigating Bethesda Game Studios for releasing a heavily glitched game. Fallout 76 and refused to issue refunds for PC purchasers of the game who found it to be unplayable because of its technical problems. So these guys are basically looking for people to reach out and tell them about their experience, tell them about all this stuff and try to set up a class action lawsuit. This does not mean that there is a class action lawsuit. It means that they are, yeah, ambulance chasers. Yeah, it means that they are asking for people to. And here's, here's their official site uh, where they actually have their um, deceptive, tr- deceptive trade practice. And it says right here that uh, uh, they're looking for people to reach out 
And it says, we have received feedback from multiple owners of Fallout 76 who purchased the Power Armor Edition, a $200 collector's edition and, uh, of the game that was advertised to include a canvas bag. Upon delivery, purchasers found the bag to be made of nylon, contrary to Bethesda's representation of the material and, the contra and contrary to the purchaser's expectations of the product. Fans who reached out to Bethesda received an explanation saying, due to the unavailable materials, we already read this part, uh, and then there are multiple Reddit threads popping up all over the place, bait and switch, all that good stuff, false advertising, whatever, right? It is, uh, uh, there's definitely a lot of, I mean, I don't know if this is ever actually going to go to court, right? Uh, French did a, he has a video here. We won't play the whole thing, obviously, because I encourage you to go and watch it. Hello, it's everyone. Good read. I'm Leonard Whoop. French. Leonard French did a, a whole video here where he's basically talking about, um, about, uh, it's quite entertaining. He actually goes over the terms and everything here for you, which, which is great. So that way I don't have to. <laughs> and he goes through and he provides all this information uh, about what you can do um, if you want to seek an actual, uh, 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 an actual refund or some kind of actual, you know, response or something from from bethesda um he points out that this kind of stuff does cost money to bethesda but you know at the same time if you're going to take a lawsuit to bethesda you have to be ready to lose and pay for it so at your own risk um he does mention something at the end of the video i think is pretty good uh and pretty uh it's worth repeating you can actually request that they just fulfill the promise just fulfill the, just give us the bag and give them an opportunity to actually send you that actual bag as it was advertised. So if that's if that's an option, if so for those of you guys who purchased the collector's edition, uh, then this is something that you could do. I'm sure I'm certain very few people will do will do that because that's just the way we are. Uh, I'm actually curious, do any of you guys in chat, and you don't have to answer if you don't want to. And I totally understand if you don't. Did any of you guys get the collector's edition? Is that is is did any of you guys pick that up? And if so, what was the quality of the helmet? Was the helmet any good? No, I didn't. Nope. No. Did not get it. Nobody's why actually cares about the bag. It's a loss of trust of the company. You can't fix that. Exactly. Exactly. That is that is that is pretty much it. I got the regular. Uh Shinsef, you have it. How, what is the quality of the, of the helmet? Is that at least, is that at least good? Or was the bag just so much, so bad that it was the only thing worth mentioning? <clears throat> Did he buy the regular edition on sale? I will say, again, I will say that, uh, you know, the hours that I spent in the game, which I think they're up to like 20 to 25 hours, something like that. Like I have, I do enjoy the, I do enjoy the game. It is buggy as fuck. And I've had all kinds of, of issues with it. Uh, but I mean, I've been having fun. I can't recommend it, but uh, the helmet was okay-ish. Had to glue a piece back on. Oh my god! All right. Did it come with the required? Yeah, you had to, did you have to go dig through uh, the garbage to find something you could deconstruct to make glue <laughs> to make adhesive? Oh man! So this is um, pre-order, folks. Yeah, this is. I don't know how many like signs we need or how many instances we need for people to realize that they shouldn't buy things that are not. I mean, especially from Bethesda now they're fucked. Um, like pre-ordering and all that stuff. I mean, I bought the title because I had people to play with and I was like, this might be kind of fun to play with people. Um, I didn't pre-order it though. Did I pre-order? I don't think so. I bought it like the day of launch, I think. Um, but if more people, especially the ones who really, really don't like it, if, 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 if we held out and didn't buy the game, then maybe this would be a little bit different. But there's definitely some shit coming down the, uh, uh, the pipe here um, for Bethesda. And we're probably gonna, we're probably gonna have to mention them over the next several months, maybe. But it's tough because the news cycle, it basically just, it happens, it hits, and then it disappears. Tanner Rose, I have alerts turned off, but thank you, sir. I missed another one actually back there, but thank you guys. Um, the news cycle for this stuff is going to get played out, and people are going to, and what's going to happen is like, oh, well, they did something else stupid, but you know what? We're kind of burnt out on bashing Bethesda, so we're going to move on to something else. And so maybe nothing will happen because of this. Maybe they're just going to release a couple patches, and that'll be it. Or maybe 
Elder Scrolls Six, yeah, is, is, is going to use the same engine, make me think, oh, well, there you go. That, and you know, it's funny, that was a big thing that a lot of people uh, pointed out, was that they were hyped for Elder Scrolls Six, but this definitely killed it. And, I, I mean, I don't blame them. Like, if, 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 your, if your favorite game company has a bad record uh, going into one of your most anticipated releases, then you, you should lower your, you definitely should temper your expectations for that. Absolutely. I spent 50 bucks on a honey-baked ham. Ham didn't arrive in time for Christmas. Customer service contacted me, uh, gave me a free entree of my choice. Then called me back and gave me the honey-baked ham of the month club for a year. That's how you keep a customer for life. Yeah, there's a lot of things they could do, but they won't. Or maybe they will. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, by the time you guys, by the time YouTube, by the time you people on YouTube watch this, uh, which, you know, be tomorrow, it's very possible they would have, they could have said something. Uh, or... Or they could like just not say anything and just wait for it to blow over. And like a Reddit post will come up and say, hey, we haven't forgotten. Please respond to us, please. Kind of like, kind of like Blizzard. Blizzard, this is whole thread, a quick word from Blizzard. This whole discussion here uh, where Blizzard says on November 7th, they said, we want to start by saying, we hear you. Let me zoom in here a little bit. We hear you. Since the moment we stepped into the office on Monday, we have been discussing everything Diablo nonstop. We're fully committed to listening and engaging, so please keep the constructive feedback coming. Our primary focus right now is pouring over uh, the fee that feedback to inform internal discussions, and we'll follow up with further thoughts as soon as we can. That was November 7th. On uh, November 28th, there was a Reddit thread that popped up and said, We have not forgotten. It was like, hey, we did not forget. Where's our info? Three weeks. Three weeks had passed. Nothing. And then yesterday, we got a response in the same thread. We actually got a response. Did you guys read the response yet? I'll read it for you. Here we go. It's loading. Blizzard slow. Here we go. We continue to read feedback and our internal discussions are ongoing. We have many plans for Diablo across multiple projects, which we'll be revealing over the course of the coming year. We are eager to share more about all of our projects, but some will have to wait as we prefer to show you rather than tell you about them. It's going to take some time as we strive to meet your expectations, but now, more than ever, we are committed to delivering the D D Diablo experiences the community can be proud of. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they did. They did get back to us three weeks and said yes, exactly that soon. <sighs> man, typical PR. It is. It is very much typical PR. Uh, and, that, and it's funny because this next post here: internal discussions, check. Multiple projects, check. Need to continue waiting for any shred of info, check. It is. It is very much PR. Did the original post say Diablo teams? I wonder. Nope. Okay. That's a good way. That's the poor Navalistus. He's probably just like, oh God, I'm getting all, I'm getting the brunt of this. He's like, let me just add the Diablo teams. That way I can, uh, I can kind of dodge some of this stuff. And we'll just say, oh, it's for the Diablo, Diablo teams. There you go. Uh, with the most used mod for your games is the one that fixes a shitload of bugs after years of being out. I'm not shocked that it's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've watched a lot. I've watched, I mean, I'm trying to transition, trying to transition into, you know, hating on Blizzard a little bit here, guy. Come on. <laughs> but no, you're right. Like, there is not, Bethesda doesn't have an excuse for not including a lot of the stuff that modders have done over the years uh, into the releases, especially with Fallout 76, considering it's basically Fallout 4. Um, and yeah, it's just like, it's just, it's, it's stupid. Game companies have realized their customers have really short memories that can get away with all this stuff. Yeah. The hate train has shifted gears. There we go. Uh, no, the discussion could go wherever it wants to go, for sure. And I'll try to comment on whatever you guys bring up for, you know, uh, regarding this or or um or fallouts because this is a discussion it really is uh we can't wait to give you more info soon at blizzcon next year yeah we'll see well, that's a bit of a, that's a bit of a that's a bit of a stretch uh next year's blizzcon tickets will be easy to get i feel like they're still going to sell out that's a thing like blizzcon tickets blizz between blizzard and bethesda they st i feel like they still have even though everybody's hating on them right now i feel like they still have some uh some tread left on their tires with uh, with fans, I feel like I feel like they have enough rapport with their fans uh, that they can fix this. The question is, will they fix it? You know, or will they just move on like nothing happened, and then they'll lose people who have been paying attention and just keep the people who just don't give a shit, or maybe think it's not that big of a deal, right? 
There are people out there who probably who will probably say, you know what? I got the Clex edition. The bag sucked. It's not that big of a deal. But the point from a consumer protection like perspective, uh, you should have it make a big deal out of the shitty bag, right? They should because it was not as advertised. And if we let them get away with this, then they will continue to do it, right? When they say we're we're discussing, we'll get back to you, and then they're just basically dead silent for three weeks and come back and say, oh well, you know, I uh, we're still talking without giving us anything. Um, they don't have to give us something. We're not entitled to it, sure. But it would be nice if they if they had some kind of notes. Like, hey, you know what? This is the kind of stuff that we're discussing right now. Here's a little bit more info. We're not ready to reveal anything yet. Yeah, have any have conclusions yet? This is a big deal. We really care about the community. Whatever. But this is totally PR talk, this response thing from Blizzard. Blizzard could gain so much community good uh, well, by simply releasing what they have on Diablo 4, any concept or alpha gameplay, even a logo. That's, tr I mean, you're, you're, it's true. I mean, Grant, I feel like we're there. There's a thin line between being entitled, like presenting yourself as being entitled, and also trying to help a company correct their issues. Right? It's not so much that I want them to give me Diablo 4 stuff. I just want them to communicate with us more. That's what I want, and I think that's what everybody wants. It's not so much that we want to have. The Diablo, like, oh yeah, let's use this as an excuse to get information about Diablo 4. No, it's just, we just want them to communicate with us and, like, let us know that they actually understand, you know, gamers, I guess, in general. Uh, the very sad part is that they revealed some thoughts they had of, on Diablo 4. You know, people will complain, they would say false advertising of the game eventually come out, and it wasn't exactly like those early notes. I mean, it's true, which is why... Really, I'm saying, like, just communication would be great. I don't have any issue with the Immortal Diablo announce. Could be fun and always known mobile was the future of a lot of gaming, but feel the timing and place of the announcement was a bad choice. Exactly, yeah. That's, that, was, uh, that was pretty much the exact conclusion that we came to um, in, um, what was it, two episodes ago of uh, Just News? Uh, a lot of the stuff going on behind the scenes as an Activision CFO stepping, away, stepping in is a bit scary. Yeah. Yep, that's why we, we mentioned that J. Allen Brack is the, um, he is the uh, president, but not the CEO, I think, right? Or is the vice versa? Well, Mike Morheim was both president and CEO. So that's a big, that's a big red flag. Um, but you're talking, you're, you're talking about Blizzard working on, uh, uh, on titles and mobile and all that good stuff. So there was this big article here. Um, it's on Kotaku, unfortunately. This is the past, present, and future of Diablo. It's a really big, it's a pretty good read. You're basically talking about Diablo, uh, you know, the past and all this. Stuff. It's a lot of damage control articles. It's a damage control article, right? But in here, if I type in Warcraft Mobile, it says, it says natural extension of, uh, 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 the, the natural extension of that was for one of Blizzard's incubation teams to develop a Warcraft version of Pokemon Go, which is in development for smartphones now. Surely it occurred to the decision makers at Blizzard that this World Warcraft spinoff would be a massive revenue generator, but the game is also in, pro also in production because lead designer Corey Stockton, formerly of World of Warcraft, Corey Stockton is working on a mobile game, uh, is a huge fan of Pokemon. People who have played the Warcraft mobile game say it's, a, it's also... Uh, got a lot more to it than Pokemon Go, including single player mechanics. So Warcraft Go, this is this is going to be the closing uh, announcement at the uh, uh, opening ceremony next year, BlizzCon. This is what you have to look forward to. Is uh... <laughs> but let me say this: I'm 100 with you guys that pet battles. The only reason I didn't get into pet battles in WoW was because I couldn't do it mobile. If I'm playing WoW, I'm not going to play. Wow, and play like play Pokemon in Wow. I just I can't do it. But if I could do it on mobile, that's what I would want. This is not going to be that. This is going to be a, an augmented reality type thing. You're going to like go and like slay Kobold or something like that. Like out out while you're out and about. Uh, it's going to be something like that. Uh, it's going to be something very similar to what we already have. And I say that because. Blizzard has been very safe lately uh, with everything that they've been doing. You're not done yet. Hey, hey. come on. All right, well, my, my co-host, I'm down one co-host. Um, Blizzard has been playing it pretty safe lately with some of their, with their major game announcements and everything. So, uh, show's over, I know. I lost my steam here. Uh, so, I would not, um, I would not look at this like, oh, they could come out with something groundbreaking for mobile. No, they're not. They're just going to do something that everybody else has done, and then that's going to be pretty much it. Like, it's going to be Pokemon Go with, like, some, some you know, separate 
and you know single player mechanics, whatever that might be. Uh, but for the most part, the the core game loop is going to be something re- uh, revolving around uh, uh, Pokemon Go. That similar type of thing because it exists already. There's Jurassic World. There's uh, Ghostbusters, which I, I play. I play the Ghostbusters Pokemon Go game. Um, and of course, it's Pokemon Go. I mean, there's there's a, a, tons of games like this already. So Blizzard is going to be uh, playing it safe. And uh, so I wouldn't necessarily get excited for anything. Them not playing it safe would be putting fucking pet battles, the actual pet battles, in the mobile. To me, that would not be playing it safe. Like, just put the pet battles in. Don't put anything else in. Because that would be what we wanted. <laughs> Granted, it's what you wanted seven years ago, but still, it's something that we actually wanted. <sighs> Let me see. Rewind a little bit. Kind of went out of order here. You guys want to talk about loot boxes? Let's talk about loot boxes. So, most recent stuff with uh, loot boxes, because this is something with loot boxes every fucking week, which is good. Uh, we've actually talked about it here on the show. The FTC will investigate video game loot boxes. Oh, man. Yes. Hopefully, yes. So, the FTC, uh, the Federal Trade Commission, they basically regulate trade. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know what the equivalent is overseas, um, I think, but I think the name pretty much speaks for itself. Uh, they're going to investigate and see if loot boxes uh, is uh, technically gambling we're not the first ones to do this we're kind of like blizzard in this respect we wait for other countries to do it and then we see if it's going to work out and then we'll jump in and do it we'll be last on this thing kind of like uh yeah like apple too um and so is it is it for valve um they're going to look into just just basically as a whole what what's the deal with with uh, uh with loot boxes and I think probably the most interesting part, there's not really a whole lot to talk about here. They're going to look into it. So we have to like basically wait. Like there's not a whole lot of discussion about whether or not this is a thing. They basically they have to come up with a, a report and the reports, then they're going to uh, base, they're going to figure out what they're going to do based on the report and all this stuff. Um, but down here, the ESA, the ESA, the uh, Entertainment Software Association, which uh, if you look up, if you look up the Entertainment Software Association, there's a lot of companies underneath this, uh, underneath this, uh, uh, this label, this company. That work with them. Um, I actually went to uh, a fundraiser event. It was like a suit and tie fundraiser event uh, in 2015 or 16. I, I, I tweeted about it um, because I met with, uh, uh, I was like rubbing shoulders, bumping shoulders or elbows, whatever the term is, with uh, with Reggie from uh, from Nintendo, actually. We were talking about, they had like this big uh, uh, go-kart or uh, um, Mario Kart cart that was uh, up for uh, some kind of uh, a giveaway or something like that they were doing there. Anyways, uh, also, also kind of funny. While I was at this thing, dressed all nice and everything, I rubbed Reggie's shoulders. Sure, why not? I uh, I ran into an old coworker of mine, and like her and I did not get along at the uh, you know, when we worked together. We did not get along at all. She was working the event as a server. I felt like, I felt like, damn, this is, this is good. That was the best part of the night. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sitting there at this ESA fundraiser event. There's all these like dudes who are like running these game companies and everything. Uh, I, I, I see all these like, famous people and shit. Uh, and, and I'm just, I'm just a dude that works for Zam, right? I'm just like, eh, nothing. No, it wasn't, it was long before the game stuff. It was before the game stuff. Um, I want you guys to try to like, narrow it down. Somebody, you guys have no idea who this person is. Uh, anyways, yeah, so I ran into her and then she was just kind of like, she's like, oh, what are you doing? I was like, oh yeah, you know, I'm just here representing, uh, oh, my company with, uh, with all these dudes. She's like, wow, that's cool. Was it Emily? What the, this is a drop random names. <laughs> it was Ira. It was Ira. Uh, anyway, so the, uh, representative ESA says, uh, loot boxes are one way that players can enhance the experience that video games offer. Contrary to assertions, loot boxes are not gambling. They have no real world value. Players always receive something that enhances their experience, and they are entirely optional to purchase. They can enhance the experience for those who choose to use them, but have no impact on those who do not. Which is which is a bold faced lie. And I could say that because we've already seen them. Uh, we've already seen loot boxes that exist in their own games, in, in companies that are part of the association. Uh, their games 
that uh, that offer actual in-game bonuses, like actual mechanic uh, increases or, or stat increases or whatever. Uh, so that was that's just like that's just somebody ta- that's them talking to uh, basically trying to like pull the wool over our eyes. I didn't read that corporate drone enough. I'm trying, man. It's fucking hard. It sounds like a machine, a heartless, soulless machine. It's rough. Um, but you know, the ESA says that it's it's fine, totally fine. But then the IGDA, which is the International Game Developers Association, they come out and they say, hey, devs, you should really start regulating these loot boxes while, while you still can. While they still can. So the IGDA, which is essentially the equivalent, the ESA equivalent, right? Another company, uh, another organization. Uh, they're, in a sense, basically saying, no, these are an issue, and you should probably do something about it before before the feds come in and say you have to do something about it, and then we have regulation. And this is something, we, we talked about this on DigiHoo a while back. Um, the last thing we want, I mean, really, the last thing we really want is government regulation in games. Like, that is a slippery slope. We already have uh, regulation with, um, with ratings, with the rating systems and everything, but the more we get government involvement in like regular ass games, the more we start to lose this like basically creative freedom to do things that we want to do in video games. The artistic freedom, I should say, uh, to do some of the things we do in video games because we, because we, can't, because we can't be trusted. That's the problem. We can't be trusted with, uh, with, with making games without you know, putting gambling in it or something. Um, and you say, yeah, it's already too late. Multiple countries have had enough and uh, and are going into it with loot boxes. Slippery slope is what we'll call a logical fallacy. Uh, you're right, though. The UK has indeed. They have an article here, and uh, and it says, uh, "Oh wait, is that is that? Did you just link me to the same article? Uh, yeah, that's pretty funny. That's that was in my notes. <laughs> the number of child gamblers quadruples in just two years, and this is a general report that says that." You know, amongst 11 to 11 to 16 year olds, 39 percent of them over the last past 12 months have participated in gambling using their own money, uh, and 14 percent in the in the uh, previous week. Um, young people have, who have gambled in the past week spent an average of 16 pounds. Six uh, percent had gambling online had gambled online using parents' accounts, and 60 percent of young people think their parents would prefer them not to gamble at all. However, 19 percent said their parents had set strict rules about gambling. Um, now. I think probably everybody here is at least 20 something, if not 30 something, if not 40 something, maybe even older. I think all of us when we were kids have had done some kind of gambling with their friends. For me, it was playing basketball. It was like, yeah, I had like $5. I would probably go spend at the ice cream man. But if I, if I, if, if I could, you know, nail this shot from my buddy's, uh, you know, from, from my, from my buddy's backyard over the house, uh, into the, uh, the, 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 what is it? The, the basketball hoop with the, the water, the sand at the bottom, whatever the always like fell over. Like we gambled. We always gambled like that. Like that was something that we just did this. You have magic, the gathering cards. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Um, those are something, yeah, you could say TCG, you could say, uh, baseball cards, all those things. Yeah. And pogs. Yeah. Pogs. Oh my God. Pogs. Pogs. Even though you're gambling with pogs with an item. Right? It's just like a chip at, uh, that you get from the store or from, 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 uh, from a casino. It's pretty much the same thing. And so you buy, you buy the pog and you have like this huge collection of awesome pogs and then you go and play and you lose a bunch. You're basically gambling. That's pretty much what it is. Pencils. Yeah, pencils. <laughs> oh, with my rig, with my rig pencil. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about that anymore. I feel like I get in trouble. With that. The statute limitations on pencils is pretty fucking huge, dude. Um, they were banned from my middle school because it was gambling. Yeah. So it was. It, it's. It's. It's something that we all did. This loot boxes is that new thing that their that kids or teenagers or whatever, excuse me, uh, that they're doing because we're all prone to do it. We're all doing it. We're all doing it. But this is different because at least. But is it different? It's accessible. Super accessible. Super accessible. To spend a lot of money super fast. Uh, even says down here, 
Uh, let's see. I read this report. It's a six-year case. Let's see, let me look at loot box here. Loot box. Here it is. The commission also raised concerns that close to a million young people had been exposed to gambling through loot boxes and video games or on smartphone apps. These can involve player uh, play, paying money for an item that is only revealed after purchasing. Uh, and so this is like the difference between like this and Pogs, right? It's like Pogs, you know which which Pogs you're gonna get. You go to you go to the ice cream man, and he has like a, a selection of Pogs. You go, you sit there, and you go through them, and you go through them, you go through them. I'll take this one, this one, this one, this one, and then you get those things. So you know what you're getting there at least. Uh, obviously, with baseball cards and TCG, that's totally different. Like you're actually you actually don't know what you're getting until you open it up, but you always get the gum. That was the, that was the kicker with those. They got away from they got they got around the gambling thing because you were buying the gum. Basically, that's why they all came with gum. Why else would they put gum on these things? Um, and so, so the UK is looking into it. The Australian government, everybody's getting into this. Everyone's jumping on this. Everyone. The Australian government just released a 90 page report that said, yeah, sugar to cardboard. Yes, the gum was terrible. I'm glad, I'm glad we all tried this gum. It's pretty shitty. It was like right up there with, uh, Bubblegum Joe or whatever. What was that? Joe, Joe Bubblegum, Bubblegum Joe, whatever it was called. God, that was the worst. You know, you take like 50 of those things and put them in your mouth. Try chew, Bazooka Joe. Thank you so much. You would chew like 10 or 15 of those things and it would still only last like two minutes. Yeah, the pink ones. There, it was just, it was <laughs> just, just ridiculous. Uh, and so they did a five month inquiry and they have a 90 page paper. Now, this 90 page report, uh, it it's not this isn't like some kind of law or anything like that. All it is is oh really you gonna put it down there? Hmm. Let me oh trust hold on a second. Make sure there's nothing here. All right, so there you go. So let's go ahead and go through this. <clears throat> page one. No, I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, <laughs> so basically yeah, this 90 page report. All this says is here's all the information that we were able to gather about about loot boxes from the left and the right or the top and the bottom, whatever. They try to gather all the information from all sides, and now they're presenting it and they're saying, hey, now we need to do an actual study on this information, using this information that we've collected, uh, and figure out if this is actually gambling. So that's all this is. It's not, this is not legislation or, or any kind of, they're trying, not, not trying to pass a law, they're just saying this is a gameplay. Loot boxes are awarded to players as a result of gameplay achievements such as hours played or missions completed. Gameplay with purchasable key. Loot boxes are provided to players during gameplay, but players must purchase a key to open the loot box. That's very similar to PUBG. Purchase. Players purchase a loot box and are able to open it to obtain random items within. So you see what they're doing? They're basically trying to break down what loot boxes are so that the old folks that work in governments that they can actually understand what all this stuff means. They'll have all the information presented to them and they can make an informed decision, hopefully, uh, uh, on whether or not these things are um, are considered gambling. So it's not an opinion piece or anything. It's just basically just straight up info. Australia's video game industry largely, largely focuses on the production of games of narrative storytelling, problem solving, puzzle solving, escapism, and role playing, sports games, games about superheroes, board games, card games, strategy, and educational games. There are over 200 game studios in Australia, and the industry employs approximately 1,000 people across the. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, I missed the part where I, saw, there's a, I had notes here for this. Uh, it faces economic challenges from piracy and, and arbitrage. Ar arbitra uh, and as such, this is this this is had to develop a range of revenue streams beyond retail sales. So you see, they're trying to present this as like, here's all the information. Um, this is why they're doing these things, or why, they're, they're, why we found that they've told us that they're doing these things. Um, and it says to ensure economic viability of the industry. So there's obviously some points here. We've talked about this in the past. I think everyone's talked about this. This has come up in conversation before. Like the price of video games has really not changed. Like the box, the price of the box of video games has really not changed in a long time. Even though inflation has gone up X percent over the past, you know, X money, Y years, um, the cost of video games still remains about the same. Now, I'm, I'm not including DLC, collector's editions, uh, all this other stuff. When I, was, when I was a kid, it was you buy the Nintendo cartridge. And then you buy like the Prima strategy guide separate if you're into that kind of thing. Um, mostly for the maps. I don't know. I, I like collecting the maps and those things. Um, so your extra revenue, your extra sales was basically going to another company anyway. So the box sale was pretty much all you had. It was like 50 bucks. It was like 50 bucks back then. And fast forward to now 
wages wages have gone up a little bit, but not but not as much as uh uh as well I guess housing uh tuition textbooks and uh, <laughs> definitely not as much as video games. <laughs> Video game prices have pretty much remained about the same. Uh, so there is an argument to be made there that they need to, yeah, healthcare. Yeah, thank you. Um, there is an argument there that uh, that they need to make find a way to make more money. And unfortunately, like they went with loot boxes. On you, know, we already had you know um, in store or in, in game shops and and uh, micro microtransactions and subscriptions and all this stuff. This is just the latest and creative ways that they come up with in order to try to make more money now are they hurting that much when they sell two million copies of a game right like that's the thing that's the thing that they have to basically weigh this against and that's what they're going to be talking about uh in australia so the good news is so far that i can see no major like no country uh or major organization uh or anything has has come out and said flat out it is not gambling it is okay to have uh, uh it is okay to have loot boxes that give away in-game you know uh, items that have you know uh, in-game bonuses like stat increases and whatever else um this argument doesn't fly when the ceo is making a million a year they won't pass on the revenue to the little people oh yeah no for sure that yeah, you you're you're right. Like if you figure if somebody makes a million dollars a year and they sell a million copies of the game and they get like a dollar from each each take, it's it's a bit extreme. Um I feel like that's also another issue altogether though. I feel like that's not I feel like they're this this is talking about the revenue stream from games themselves. Um because people were making crazy money back in the day. I'm not saying that executives were making the same amount of money proportionally twenty years ago they are now. That's not true. Um so yeah, it's 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 something that Australia is going to look into and the UK is going to look into and Belgium is going to look into and the US is going to look into. Everybody's looking into it. So we'll know probably by the end of, by, by probably 2020, we'll know whether or not loot boxes is something that, uh, that is, uh, that we're allowed to, you know, have in games. Uh, what about that one time when you opened its mouth, told investors turning off money, the cash shop won't affect earnings. Yeah. I don't remember that exactly, but that sounds like something. Let's say. Um, let's see. Gaming has also gone mainstream in the last number of years. Box sales are higher than ever. That's very true. Yes, absolutely. Uh, there's less overhead than ever because of digital. Mm hmm They'll also look into all those campaign campaign contributions the ESA does. Yeah, so that's the thing I worry about with FTC is campaign contributions, basically contributions in general. Uh, see, EA tells investors turning off uh, the Battlefront 2s. Let's go ahead and pull this over here. Um, I just, will not affect earnings. What was this? I remember. Oh, wow, this is a year ago, actually. Wow. Chain is not expected to have, oh, okay, never mind. I do remember that. The chain is not expected to have material impact. Uh, yeah, so it, EA has been trying to pull this shit uh, for a while now. They were the first ones. There's that, there's that, uh, that uh, meme floating around. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, actually, I have no idea what it's about, but it's got, uh, it, it's got, um, oh God, what's his face? Uh, it's sitting with like a noose around his neck and there's a bunch of other dudes with nooses around their necks and he's like, and they're all like, they're all labeled. It has like, like the first person has like EA over his face. And the next person has, uh, uh, has what is it, uh, um, Blizzard, and then, uh, well, Blizzard Activision, and then whoever else. And so it's been Bethesda, and it's like, oh, first time, huh? And it's true. Like, you know, they, EA has been doing this for, like, a long time. Uh, and really, and Valve, and Valve. Valve is getting shit on a little bit. Oh, did you find it? Did you find it for me? Yes, you did. Oh, sh I should have recognized who that was. There you go. Blizzard, Bethesda, Valve. First time, did that. Hey, I recognize this guy. I, I, I haven't seen this one with the, uh, the faces uncovered. Uh, this dude, um, he plays, uh, oh God. Uh, yeah, I know that's James Franco. But this guy plays the bad guy in uh, uh, Last Action Hero. I don't know his name, but he plays the bad guy in all his films. So anyways, uh, by the way, that's an amazing movie that my wife couldn't stick it, stick it out through. And I was pretty disappointed because it was so good. She fell asleep. She's like, yeah, we'll watch this movie you like. I was like, cool. And then she falls asleep every time, every time, man. I'm going to start feeding her caffeine pills. I'd be like, let's watch this thing. Steve Steventon. What? I don't believe you. Lies. <laughs> I actually looked it up. It actually did pull up an IMDb. It really did pull up an IMDb. I thought you for real. I was like, oh shit, is that really his name? 
Uh, anyway, so yeah, EA. So everybody's investigating loot boxes. Uh, they're trying to make up for revenue lost. Speaking of revenue lost, I think I think we are actually seeing. We all knew this was coming. I think we are actually now seeing the beginning of the end, or maybe like the middle of the end, for GameStop. GameStop reports. $488.6 million loss despite strong software sales. So, this is a big deal. I mean, not just because it's a lot of money, but because it's a lot of money. And it's a lot more than they have ever lost. I went back, I went back and checked their, uh, their quarterly results, because I couldn't find an article that actually said anything about it, uh, for the past three years, I think. And each time, they were usually in the positive. It was like, oh yeah, you know, positive. Or like, if they're if they if they're down a little bit, it was like ah, eh, like fifty mil or something. I think fifty mil is the lowest I'd seen. And they basically went from like breaking even to a half a billion dollar loss, and that is massive. I don't. This is so. This is such a huge drop that. I mean, yeah, they say, oh, yeah, because digital sales are basically taking over and all this stuff. Uh, and so they're losing their, their footing as a brick and mortar. But that's such a huge loss. I feel like there's something else going on here. I feel like this, we're going to get some kind of news about some kind of, you know, funneling money into whatever, like something. Because that is a fucking lot to go from breaking even, maybe a little bit of loss for like years to basically a half a billion dollars gone. They must have like been bullshitting investors this whole time. And I, I, I don't know if this is true. Okay. I, I'm just making shit up. Okay. But they must have been doing something to all of a sudden be like, oh shit, I found these receipts. <laughs> oh, look at that. Half a billion dollars. That's crazy. They got to sell my GameStop, GameStop stock last year. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You know what GameStop should probably do? They should probably, Mike's thinking, because it was pulling a Krispy Kreme. Oh, that's right. Krispy Kreme had their own bullshit. Uh, they tried to sell the company for $5 billion, but only get an offer of $1,000. Oh, Jason. Time to buy stock while stock is low. As I went to GameStop was for a Switch game, and they tried to upsell me so hard on extra stuff. There were still collector's editions from two years ago on shelves. Eesh. Yeah, I, I, you know, I actually go to GameStop pretty often with Declan because I know that, I know that GameStop's not going to be around when he's older. And I want him to have that experience. I take him to Fry's too, because I know that's not going to be around either. Is that going to Fry? I, if I had a micro center, we'd be there every day. Um, I take him to Fry's. I take him to GameStop because, you know, these places aren't going to be around. And it's, and I love, I love the environment. I love being able to have all this like little stupid shit, like accessories and all that stuff that you could pick up if you wanted to. It's like, oh yeah, I got him. Like for Christmas, we got him a, uh, uh, do I still have it here? Right? I mean, like, we just walk in the store and just get him. Just get him something. He's into it. We'll pick it up. Right? I like that. I know I could get this online for probably cheaper, but I like that. And also, not to mention the used games that we picked up for the kid. Right? Used games. Used games. This is all from, uh, from, uh, from GameStop. Right? Wreck-It Ralph. Because I'm sure it probably sucks, but, you know, he's, he's six. He's not gonna care. Um, it's, it's, it's not gonna be around. And... This number here pretty much says, yeah, it's definitely not going to be around unless, unless they pull a Radio Shack and bring in like subscription based services. They could pull some kind of uh, finder's fee on, but that's, that's such a stretch. That's such an old, old strategy. I just can't, I can't imagine it being a thing. I cannot imagine. I, I feel like the only, the, the, the only thing that's probably going to happen is like Amazon. Because Amazon's got like stores that they're putting out now. I don't know if you guys have seen them. They actually have like stores that they've been uh, building now um, where they curate things. I, I can imagine Amazon might try to like reach out and connect with some of the gamer community by, uh, um, by buying up a GameStop and converting them. So, Or there just won't be stores. Yeah, in the future there won't be stores. Yeah, that's true. Fries is great. Bunch of tech people hanging out. They don't press you to buy a bunch of extra warranties and junk. You can just sit and chat with them about tech stuff. Buy your crap and leave. Wow, Zebrios! That is a totally different experience than what I get. Except for the part where there's a bunch of tech people hanging out and don't press you to buy anything because they just hang out and they don't help you. And then when you buy something, they swarm you in order to actually write up the ticket so they get credit for it. So I think we have totally different Fry's experiences. Um, because my experience is, is not quite like that. 
Amazon is building up everywhere right now. Same day delivery is impressive. It's crazy. It is. It is. It's pretty nuts. It is pretty nuts. Um, is the GameStop site up for you? Oh. Yes, it is. It is. It's up. It's here. Can you imagine the site just went down? It's not for you. No, it's here. You can go get Pokemon. Let's go if you want to. Go chase your shinies or whatever the fuck. Uh, just Cause 4. Fallout 76. Regular. Starting at 59.99. Wow. Uh, look, even a free-to-play game is 30 bucks. <laughs> I know it's funny. I don't understand why they're trying to sell Fortnite. Everyone already has Fortnite. What are they, who are they selling this to? Actually, it's probably the most like highest selling games. It's funny though, because like I mean, on Switch, it's like you just download it; it's totally free. I probably comes with skins or something stupid. Uh, the site looks like it was a MySpace template. It actually kind of, uh, I mean, it looks like a regular like you know brick and mortar store or whatever front. Um, it's yo, know, it is. It's the banners on the side. The Nerf Beyblade. What is this actually? Oh, it doesn't click. Oh, what? How am I supposed to buy something? What is it? What is it? Uh, uh, Beyblade. Okay. Nothing here. Okay. Nerf. Nerf rival. Where is the Nerf Beyblade? Bay. It's not here. What is this? Why would they have an ad? You can't click on. This is why, this is why GameStop lost half a billion do dollars. Feedback. Oh, that works. Uh, let's see. Page feedback. Uh, page feedback. Help us out. Oh, geez. What is Oh, it's a fucking survey. No, how about I just tell you that you can't click on anything to go to the advertisers that they're advertising. This is so dumb. What is the Beyblade? Is this like, I mean, Nerf, Nerf is, is still a thing. Uh, Beyblade. Let me see. What is this? What is this? What is this thing? What is this a mod? I'm trying to find something on it. I can't find anything on it. It's probably dumb. This is probably silly. Um, Beyblade is an anime about tops. Is it an anime? Oh. Wow. Well. I didn't know anything about that. Sorry. <laughs> is, this, is this anime? <laughs> <laughs> I looked up Beyblade and didn't come up with it. Couldn't come up with anything. Jeez, I think those might be their sponsors. Beyblade is separate from Nerf. Oh, see, why did you guys tell me this? But still, though, why can't we click on it? Anyways, so this is why they lost a half a billion dollars to try and tie it back into the news. Thank you, thank you, Zuggis. Um, I guess in other news, in other news, we're kind of running out of news here. We actually got through so much stuff here. I actually thought this this was gonna be a super short episode, but as it turns out. It is, uh, it is not. It's right on, right on par. Uh, so this is actually pretty interesting. And it's something that probably not a lot of folks really uh, notice. Because I saw the official tweet for this and it didn't get like any, any retweets or any action. Uh, so, anybody who... Uh, Crazy Quad, thank you so much. Let's turn it off. Um, anybody who's a content creator on YouTube, you've probably used annotations, right? Annotations... Uh, was just a way for you to like mark a certain area. So I could say, if you want to go so-and-so and check this out, click on here. And I could have a little annotation thing that pops up right there and you could click on it, right? We've all seen annotations. Some of them are super obnoxious. I think a lot of us have them turned off by default. Um, well, the annotations editor was discontinued on May 2nd, of 2017. Did you know that? Did you know that? Did you know that? Probably not because nobody uses them anymore, right? But did you know that they will actually stop showing existing annotations to viewers starting January 15th, 2019? All existing annotations will be removed. So all of those annotations for like millions of videos, gone. Just gone. Bill DeFranco is going to suffer. <laughs> I, yeah, there's still, there's still like the, uh, the little thing that comes up right here. It goes zoop like that, right? Like that little thing that comes up right there. And that's still going to be there. And you can still put that in and all that. But being able to say, click on this or click on this or click on this in the middle of a video doesn't work. The end cards are sexy. The end cards totally work. At the end, it will 
you know, it'll pop up and you could do, it'll click on this, click on this, whatever. But it's only the last 20 seconds or something like that, right? That you can actually put them in. Unless they open up for end cards to be available everywhere, in which case I'll have to rename it because end cards wouldn't work if it's the beginning of the video. But still, um, those actually work on mobile. And that was the big reason why they got rid of them is because they couldn't make annotations work on mobile. Why? Because they made it too flexible and people made crazy things with annotations. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, so great point, Fun Guns. There's all these crazy adventures that, that people made with like a ton of different, uh, uh, a ton of different videos that link together. Like, like it was like a choose your own adventure uh, thing. Well, those are all going to be dead. And le unless the creator goes back and puts like links, I guess, at the, underneath the video, which kind of sucks. So that era is gone. And you say, Phil, most uses end cards. Well, don't forget the, the actual creator, the actual thing, to the tool to make the annotations was discontinued uh, uh, last year. So yeah, he definitely has uh, not, using, not used them in a while. Um, the history of videos are going to be referencing annotations that don't exist. Future generations are going to think we're crazy. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of stuff we're going to lose because of this. Um, I, I feel like, I, f I feel like it's kind of, it's a huge, I feel like it's actually a pretty huge loss because of that. There are some annotations that actually had some good. And now those are going to be gone. Just gone. And yeah, it's just, yeah, just gone. It's crazy. I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy that they, they did this instead of trying to come up with a way to like, maybe by default, turn them off or something. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what they could do. I'm, I'm not a developer. I'm sure somebody up there can fucking figure out a way to make that actually work. Um, but that's not me. Um, yeah. This is nuts. Uh, so the, rip, rip all of your uh, uh, choose your own adventure videos. Did kind of suck. I did like annotations used well. Uh, the little dot and panel pop up you could do is all right, but eh, I like simple annotations. Yeah, that's true. And that pop up is always in the same spot. Again, it's like they're trying to unify the uh, of the platforms because mobile couldn't support annotations, so they basically they're going to do away with them. That's pretty much it. YouTube is all about the dollar. Fixing annotations doesn't bring them any money. Getting rid of them entirely might save them some grief. That's true. That's very true. True. You, you two need to stop fixing things. Yeah, they probably want the data they take. Uh, they take back. I imagine it's quite a bit out of storage space. I mean, I wonder. I wonder. I, I feel like it wouldn't be that much, especially considering it's Google. But I mean, there's got to be some kind of overhead associated with it. And and also, are they actually going to be like deleting them, or are they just going to stop showing them? Because it says it says we will stop showing existing annotations, and it's but at the same time, it also says and all existing annotations will be removed. So I want to know which one of these is actually happening. Are they just going to stop showing them or are they going to be removed? I'm hoping they just stop showing them because maybe sometime in the future when we're smarter or something, we can like re-implement them and go back on these crazy adventures from back in the day um, and experience what YouTube was like back then. Yeah, I, I mean, I really, the only way you can experience it is like literally finding a video of somebody showing what it was like to explore YouTube through annotations, the good and the bad. There's got to be, you know what? There will be a YouTube classic. That's pretty funny. Uh, there will be a bunch of videos that pop up at the end of this. That's going to be like the good and the bad, the history of annotations. And somebody will actually show. So at least we'll have some kind of documentation uh, in place. So that way, when my kid grows up and he's like, dad, what was life like uh, back when you had YouTube annotations? And I'll be like, well, son, and I'll sit him down. And I'll tell him all about the days of, uh, of annotations. <sighs> the wild, wild west of, uh, of annotations. Speaking of wild, wild west, this is actually kind of a small thing that's already happening. Uh, Red Dead Redemption online launches beta uh, November 27th. It was a staggered release, so it was November 27th. Uh, and then, like, each day, it was depending on what tier you bought. I haven't played it, but what I've heard is that the multiplayer is exactly what you'd expect. It's just, uh, it's before the Bethesda Wars. <laughs> uh, people are basically killing each other constantly. So that is, uh, I think that's great. I'm actually, I'm hoping that Rockstar puts in, uh, or somebody mods in the, uh, the, I guess, RP version, right? Like the GTRP, but like RDRRP. Fuck. <sighs> I really hope that somebody does something like that because. While I don't necessarily watch a lot of RP stuff, I do feel like it's something they can expand on. And you know, Red Dead Redemption is a beautiful game that could totally 
uh, take advantage of, uh, of role playing, the role playing community. Everybody on voice was talking in a fake Southern accent. That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. Everybody just, just killing everything. Yeah. Uh, ain't gonna have while it's only on console. Well, eventually it'll come to PC. Yeah. But, uh, what well, people are, people are, like I said, walking around. So I guess you kind of get something going, but when they're walking around going like this and like, all right, well, we're going to go and saddle up and whatever we're gonna i don't know i have no idea how fucking cowboy talks clearly but that but that one guy from india comcast like he had a pretty good clint eastwood i was like oh damn until it fell apart because he got pissed off at me because i was pissed off at him he's like did you try unplugging and plugging back in i say yep he said can you do that for me real quick sure done i was really upset with this guy uh <laughs> and suddenly suddenly the accent was gone it's crazy all right, so that's it for news. I think we covered everything. We even got the Nintendo thing at the very beginning. We kind of squeeze that in there. It wasn't part of the list, but we squeeze it in there. We squeeze it in there. Um, since this is going on YouTube, a little bit about content. Uh, if you guys caught the end of uh, of of uh, Don't Starve Adventures, that is something that uh, 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 did not end the way I wanted it to. I'm trying to work on a way to get around that, so that way those of you guys who are fans of that show can not continue watching it. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to start over. Uh, on PC and go from there. So that's something we're trying to work. I'm trying to work on later. Uh, any for breakfast, Loria. Right before the stream here, we had Loria Game, uh, the official, the, the actual developer, come in and talk to us a little bit. Uh, I actually did cover this game uh, pretty extensively. I got I have a 55 minute any for breakfast going over it. If you've not seen it, if you've not seen it, you already know what you're looking at. <laughs> you should immediately know just by looking at it what it looks like. Um, I highly recommend at least going and watching in the uh, the. Um, the Indie for Breakfast on this one. If you are a patron, if you are a patron on on uh, uh, Patreon, which is where the patrons are, uh, there's actually bonus content that I have for this that I'm putting out. And actually, I'm going to be doing that going forward. It's actually a bonus episode. Uh, I called it Indie for Brunch because I'm super creative like that. And, uh, and I feel like going forward, it might be kind of a good idea to associate some of this bonus content uh, with uh, as exclusives for Patreon. And what I was the what I was liking it to is is that on the photography stuff on the photography side, there's tons and tons and tons of photography uh, uh, exclusive stuff that they get, and I don't really have anything to offer uh, uh, Patreon because if I put everything exclusive for Patreon, then I won't grow the channel. So uh, I feel like this indie for brunch thing as a secondary um, as secondary uh, 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 content or parallel content would actually be a pretty interesting. Uh, thing to explore. Anyways, Loria, go check out the Need for Breakfast for that. It's going to be on this channel, YouTube. Uh, and you can check that out whenever you want. So, that's it. <sighs> when does food get brought into the photography Patreon? Can we get some bacon and eggs into the photos? You want to do a food shoot? I know someone wants to do a food shoot with, uh, uh, what does she want? She wants pizza. I was like, all right, we could do this. We'll do it like Dodger style, but with actual boobs. Like, Nude, I should say, not actual boobs. That's rude. Like nude. Um, cool. Because I know if I said like Dodger, you guys go Google it. All right. No, she doesn't do nudes. All right, guys. That's it. My name is Mike B. This is Just News. My co-host has left the show early. She just went too long for her. Jesus. Um, you can catch me at AK Mike B on Twitch, Twitter, uh, YouTube, obviously, uh, and other platforms. So. Dodger did a pizza shoot. She did. She did a pizza shoot. It was for Playboy, and everyone freaked out. They're like, what? And it was like, it was not nude. It was like, because the Playboy had shifted gears and uh, stopped doing nudes. And I think they're doing nudes again now. Actually, I have no idea. I haven't really kept track. Anyways, my other co-host right here, thank you so much, you guys, for helping out here. The Dodger shots are great. They were. They're actually really great. Um, yeah, future me. Woo! There we go. There we go. There we go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for helping. And that's it. I guess I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.